Welcome to a reflection on the Rosary, our ladder to heaven. We pray the Rosary for many reasons. One is that we open ourselves up to the influence of the Holy Spirit. We open our hearts to the graces God wants to pour out upon us. Another reason is that Jesus shows us that he wants us to come to Mary. He listens to Mary when she comes to him with our requests. Another reason is that in every appearance that Mary has made here on earth, she has encouraged devotion to the rosary. Since she is our Holy Mother, she will not steer us wrong. Here's how we pray the rosary. First, we make the sign of the cross. While holding the crucifix, we pray the creed. On the first large bead, we pray the Our Father. On the three smaller beads, we pray a Hail Mary on each bead. On the first large bead, we pray the Glory Be. We announce the mystery, pray in Our Father, and pray ten Hail Marys. On the large bead, we pray the Glory Be. Then, again, we announce the mystery, we pray the Our Father, we pray ten Hail Marys. On the large bead, we pray the Glory Be. And then again, we announce the mystery, we pray the Our Father, and pray ten Hail Marys. We do this for the five decades, or the five mysteries of the Rosary. We pray the joyful mysteries on Mondays and Saturdays, starting with the angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Mary visits Elizabeth. Jesus is born. Joseph and Mary present Jesus in the temple. Joseph and Mary find Jesus in the temple. There are several ways that you can pray the rosary. You can visualize the scene using your imagination or pictures or statues or nature. You can place yourself in the scene as an observer or as an actor. You can ponder the deeper meaning of the scene. You can consider scripture, the word of God, as it has spoken to this mystery. And you should always be listening to the Holy Spirit as he speaks to you about this mystery. The reflections that are contained here in this show are inspirations that I have received. You will undoubtedly receive different inspirations. Please go where the Spirit leads you. These reflections are meant as a starting point for you. Nothing more, nothing less. When praying for others, whether they are our loved ones or our enemies, the rosary is a great way to grow in charity. When you place yourself or others in the scene that you are meditating on, make sure you include those that you are praying for. See them there with you at the foot of the cross or see them in the suffering Christ. See them in the newborn babe in the manger, or see them in Mary receiving the angel's words joyfully. See those that you are praying for, and your prayer will reach new depths, and your soul will reach new heights. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, and grant us the strength to love. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first joyful mystery, the angel Gabriel greets Mary. Angels are messengers, and the angel Gabriel bore a message for Mary, that she was highly favored by the Lord, that she is full of grace. As children of God, we too are favored by the Lord. And if we choose to be, if we open ourselves up, we too can be full of grace. Place yourself in this scene, Mary at prayer, being greeted by an angel, more beautiful, more magnificent, more wonderful than we can imagine, and hearing words like favored by God, full of grace, you will conceive and bear a son, hearing words that amazed her, and the angel loving her, and full of joy with the message that he bore. That must have been contagious, huh? We are also called, like Mary, to say yes to God. Let us ponder the deeper meaning of this scene. Mary was open to the Lord's graces, which he poured upon her so that she became full when you are filled with something, when a glass is filled with something, there's no room for anything else. There was no room in Mary's heart for sin. She was so full of a share in God's life. That's what grace is, a share in God's life. We too can be full of grace if we are prayerful, if we are open to the Lord's guidance and blessings. And as we are filled with his grace, we are called to give that out to others, since we here on earth are the hands and feet, the heart and mouth of Jesus, as we are called to minister to his body, the church. The second joyful mystery, Mary visits Elizabeth. When the angel Gabriel came to Mary, he told her that her cousin Elizabeth was miraculously pregnant. And the first thing that Mary does upon receiving the word of God within her womb is to care for someone else. 
she performs a corporal work of mercy. She brings Jesus. As soon as she receives him, she brings Jesus to others. We are called to emulate Mary. We are called to bring Jesus to others. Place yourself in the scene. Mary, joyful and filled with the Lord, comes to visit her cousin, Elizabeth, who is also full of joy. When John the Baptist senses the presence of Jesus Christ, he leaps in the womb for joy. Let's ponder the deeper meaning of this beautiful scene. Mary lives out what we hear. We become what we receive. When we receive the word of God, we become his hands and feet. And we are here to serve others, not to keep Christ to ourselves, but to share him in doing the spiritual and corporal acts of mercy. This beautiful mystery also shows us, beyond doubt, that we are infused by the Spirit with personhood from the moment of our conception. We are a unique, unrepeatable person that God has created in His image. Even when we are just a tiny mass of cells, even when we are hidden in our mother's womb, even before Mary or Elizabeth knew that they were pregnant. That little baby inside was a unique, unrepeatable, precious person. As Mary sheltered the word of God within her womb when she received him, and she received him body and blood, soul and divinity, we too shelter Christ within us when we receive him in Holy Communion, when we receive his body, blood, soul, and divinity. We become living tabernacles to bring Christ to others. The third joyful mystery, Jesus is born. Visualize the scene. Mary and Joseph, after a long, arduous journey, receive the blessing of the Word incarnate, Jesus Christ, and immediately share him with others, with the angelic chorus in the sky, with the animals in the stable, with the shepherds and the three kings who come to visit and worship. Place yourself in this scene. Mary giving birth in a stable without the comfort of her mother. Joseph, probably unsure of what the Lord wants of him. And isn't that just like us? Aren't we unsure of what the Lord wants for us? We strive to do his will hoping and praying that we are doing his will. The skies filled with the angelic choir singing glory to God in the highest. How wonderful. Place yourself in the scene, in that rude stable. Who are you? Are you Mary, having given birth to the Christ child? Wondering, amazing, that this tiny infant is also your God. Are you Joseph? Also wondering and amazed that the Lord, our God, the creator of the universe, should empty himself into the form of a tiny, helpless infant 
born to poor parents? Are you one of the poor shepherds? Like those poorest of the poor that Mother Teresa attended. She showed the face of Jesus to these people. And here you are, one of the poorest of the poor, seeing the face of your Savior. Bringing only your adoration, your worship, and your wonder. Or are you one of the three kings come to bring your homage and bringing gifts as well? Consider the poverty of Jesus' birth, born outdoors, born amidst animals, and the poorest of the poor, the shepherds, born without any of the special things that we all want to give our children. Safety, security, shelter. Jesus did not even have shelter from the wind. Consider that God opened the treasures of heaven in this very poor atmosphere. Place yourself in the scene Maybe you are one of the three kings or traveling with them as they meet up with Herod and realize that he is a dangerous king who seeks the life of the child you come to adore. Let us consider the deeper meaning of this scene. Mary and Joseph were forced to fully rely on God. Imagine how Stressed, St. Joseph must have been to not be able to provide a safe place for Mary and the Christ child. And yet, as they relied on God, God blessed and protected them. In our own lives, we too are called to rely upon God, to remember the words that Jesus told St. Faustina we should all say when we see him, Jesus, I trust in you. As the skies were filled with the heavenly host, singing glory to God in the highest, we too are called upon to sing with the heavenly host, to praise our Lord and God, to praise our Creator and Savior. When we sing the glory at Mass, let us be aware that this song was taught to us by the angels, and be aware that the heavenly host sings with us whenever we sing that song. As Mary and Joseph must have been surprised by the strangers who crowded into that humble stable, from the highest, the kings, to the lowest, the shepherds. And yet, despite the surprise, Mary shared her child her newborn, with all. Because just as Jesus died once for all, he was born once for all, and Mary knew that. We too are called to share Christ with others, with all, not just those whom we deem worthy, or those with whom we are comfortable, or those who already know him. We are called to share Jesus Christ and the good news of our salvation with all. Let us count our blessings so that even when we seem to not have as much as we want or as much as we think we need, we can remember that Jesus suffered everything that we have suffered, pain, hunger, cold, thirst, loneliness, isolation, he suffered all that we suffer and has overcome it. Let us look to Christ, our model, our Savior, our brother in everything. There will always be those who, like King Herod, persecute the church because people are fallible and likely to be blinded by their sins and by temptation to sin. Do not be surprised or downhearted at persecution. Expect it and give thanks to God 
that he has overcome every opponent, including death. All things are passing. God alone never changes. Let us emulate the three kings who came from afar, a dangerous and difficult journey, in order to reach the object of their adoration, the God, the King of all creation. Christ came for all of us in all times and in all places. He came for rich and poor. He came for you and for me. Seek him and you will find him. Come and worship, bringing your gifts. The fourth joyful mystery, Jesus is presented in the temple. According to Jewish custom, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple on the eighth day after his birth for circumcision and to dedicate him to the Lord. What better gift could God the Father have received than the dedication of his son back to him except for Mary and Joseph's humble obedience. Place yourself in the scene. As Joseph and Mary bring the newborn Jesus into the temple for his circumcision, they are greeted by the prophet, Simeon. Simeon had been promised that he would not see death until he had seen the Savior, and God keeps his promises. Simeon's joy must have been extreme. Mary and Joseph also met Anna, a prophetess, who gives thanks to God for Jesus and spoke about him to any who would listen. We are called to emulate Simeon and Anna, to be joyful in the presence of the Lord, to receive our Savior with joy, and to speak about him to all who will listen. Let us consider the deeper meaning of this mystery. Mary and Joseph are faithful to the demands of their religion. They see that Jesus is the fulfillment of the promises that God has made to all of their forefathers, and they want to make sure that they raise him correctly and properly. We are also called to be faithful to the demands of our religion. We are called to keep holy the Lord's day. We are called to obey the Ten Commandments. And above all, we are called to obey Jesus' commandment to us, love one another. And what does that love look like? It looks like sacrifice. As we see, this is the first blood that Jesus shed for our salvation. Years and years before his passion, he was shedding his blood out of love for us. According to the Jewish custom, the firstborn male child is offered back to the Lord as the best first fruits, the best fruit of Mary's womb. We are also asked to offer our best to God as well. Our best means saying yes, to God when our will is saying no. Offering our best is making that extra effort to be loving, to be kind, to be compassionate when maybe we're in a hurry and we really feel impatient. Offering our best is going above and beyond what we think we can do to obey our Lord's command to love one another. As this is a joyful mystery, let us think about what joy there was. What joy for Mary and Joseph 
to present the newborn of whom they must have been so proud and in whom they took such delight, to present him in the temple as the very best they had to offer. What joy for Simeon and Anna to see the Savior, to realize that God once again had fulfilled his promise. What joy for God the Father to receive his Son back to him as an offering. What joy for Jesus to do the will of his Father and to enter the temple where God is served with praise and thanksgiving. What joy for Jesus to do what he did for love of us. The fifth joyful mystery, Jesus is found in the temple. This scene is where Jesus, at age 12, had gone up to the temple in Jerusalem with Mary and Joseph. They had gone with a large caravan of family and friends. When Mary and Joseph left, they assumed that Jesus, their 12-year-old, was with one family member or another. When they discovered that Jesus was not among the members of the caravan, they went back to Jerusalem searching for him. Finally, they come to the temple, and there they see the child Jesus instructing the elders in the law, teaching the teachers how to teach the Word of God, opening their minds and enlightening their hearts. Mary and Joseph came to him. Mary said, Jesus, why have you done this? We have been searching everywhere for you. And Jesus replied, why have you been searching everywhere for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house about my father's work? Jesus says the same to us. Why do you search for me? I am here. Come find me. Who are you in this scene? Are you with Mary and Joseph, most earnestly searching for the Lord? Have you somehow lost him in the hubbub of the crowd and the busyness of your life? Or are you in the temple with the Christ child? Are you one of the elders being instructed, wondering as he enlightens your heart and mind, filling you with new inspirations, new insight, and a fresh outlook onto the Word of God. Who are you in this scene? Let us consider the deeper meaning of this mystery. If we are looking for Jesus, a good place to begin is the Catholic Church, the Church which He founded. Another good place is in His Word, the Word of God, sacred scripture, the Bible and in the sacraments by which Jesus touches us and infuses us with grace. Another good place to look for Jesus is in each other, since we are temples of the Holy Spirit, and since we, as Christians, make up the body of Christ. Each one of us is part of the body of Christ. Each one of us has gifts that Jesus has given us so that we can further his mission in the world. Let us look for Jesus in each other, see his face, and respond to him in others. That will make it easy to obey his commandment to love one another, because we will be loving the Jesus that we see in others. Let us consider Jesus' response to Mary's question. Did you not know that I must be in my Father's house and about my Father's work? This response shows clearly that Jesus knew who his Father was, God the Father. And Jesus knew 
even at age 12, that he had a special mission, the salvation of the world. Again, since this is a joyful mystery, let us consider the joy in the mystery. Can you imagine having lost your child and searched for three days, and then the joy upon finding that child? Now, of course, this child that Mary and Joseph had lost was no ordinary child. He was the Savior of the world. I can imagine there was a special edge to their worry, knowing that they had lost the Savior of the world. When we find Jesus, we should experience this wellspring of joy, especially if we have sinned and we feel that we have lost him. Of course, he is always with us. He is with us in our sinning. He is with us in our purity. But when we repent, when we convert, when we turn back to the Lord, there he is waiting to forgive. And that fountain of joy should flow upon us. Imagine how fulfilling it was for Jesus to open the minds of the Jewish scholars at the temple, to prepare them to receive him as their savior. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.